Good afternoon and welcome to Step-by-Step -step Software Guided Calculus and Statistics Problem Solving. Our speaker today is Kate Sharp from Hawks Learning. If you have any questions for her during the session, please feel free to enter those into the chat at the bottom of the Zoom screen and we will address them at the end of the talk. We will be giving away three $25 Amazon gift cards to attendees. Um, be sure to enter the raffle, click on the link in the chat to enter. Um, on that note, I can hand it over to our presenter. Thanks, Kate. So just a second and let me share my screen, you guys. Um, but as Kate said, I am also Kate. I'm Kate Sharp here with Hawks Learning. Um, really excited to be presenting to you all and I appreciate you being here. So we are going to be talking about step-by-step -step software guided problem solving. And I will jump into our software to show you exactly what that looks like um, within the student experience. So let me just switch my share here here and we can get right to it. Okay, so what we are looking at here is the Hawks three-step learning path. So anytime your students go to complete an assignment with Hawks, this is what they'll see. Um, just to briefly explain, and then I'll really jump into the step-by-step -step problem solving, the learn mode is what houses the multimedia presentation of the textbook content. So if we go into learn, and I apologize for the slowness on my end, um, this is going to match what's in the textbook and the ebook word for word. It's just all of the content. As I mentioned, the only difference is that Learn is only going to show um, a few pages, whatever the content is for the particular lesson your student's working on rather than the entire ebook. So make it a little more bite sized And then it will also include some interactive components like videos. So you can see we've got a watch button. We will have lesson level videos for our lessons, as well as some examples level video scattered throughout. But that is what learn mode is. I want to spend most of our time today in practice. Um, this is where your students will get practice problems for the question types that they will see in step three, which is certify, which is just our fancy name for homework. But um, practice is exactly what it sounds like. It's a penalty free environment for your students to get used to those problem types that they will see um, for a grade and certify. So a couple of different features to point out within practice mode. First, we do have a skip button. So if your student's comfortable with any um, certain problem type, they don't have to spend time on it, they can move on to something else. But let's actually answer a question here. So this one says to find the general antiderivative of this, you see for the arbitrary constant. So if I was to answer one, um, first, I will point out we have this keypad, which will allow you to use any of the relevant symbols, functions, signs your students would need. But I am just going to type in an answer here and click submit. So obviously that was the wrong answer. I want to show you the type of error specific feedback your students will receive with Hawks. So we as a company really understand and place an emphasis on mastery learning. And part of that is explaining errors to students. We don't ever want your student to say, well, it told me my answer was wrong, but I don't know why or where to go from here. So that being said, we do have artificial intelligence built in to anticipate and diagnose common errors. So if your students click explain error, that is going to bring up really specific feedback for them. So it will tell your student, um, of course, here's what you were asked to do. Here's your answer. The answer you entered is incorrect, but we don't stop there. We're going to tell them why. It appears you found the derivative of this instead of the antiderivative. Recall, here is what you should have done. So now your student knows exactly why their answer was wrong and the um, steps they should have taken or the formula they should have used to do it correctly. So again, you'll hear me say it a lot, but we really understand it's the why behind why your answer is wrong or why the correct answer is the correct answer that is important to learning. So your students will receive that very specific feedback. And now that they know what they've done, they can go back to practice and try something else. So let me actually try and answer this a little bit different way. Let's do this and then 
keyboard, I'm going to add an exponent, or excuse me, I forgot my x, 9x squared. I'm going to arrow over to minus 11x. Say so we submit it this way. They'll still receive error specific feedback, but different speed, or excuse me, different feedback based on this error. So just to show you, um, this says, here's what you were asked to do. Of course, this was incorrect, but this time it appears you forgot to include the arbitrary constant. Check your work and try again. So again, no matter what mistake your student makes, we will try to anticipate it and give them that very detailed feedback so that they can understand why. But um, you all see step-by-step -step learn and solution built into the explain error feedback as well. We definitely are going to talk about the step-by-step -step feedback today. So tutor, um, the explain error will obviously give your students feedback on what they did wrong after they made a mistake. But if we click back to practice, you'll see that we also have this tutor button on all of our screens. So if your student needs some help getting started, they can click tutor and it will automatically bring up step-by-step step learn and solution. So this problem just has two steps, but you can see this will walk your student through every single step of solving that problem. Again, um, we want them to know exactly why the correct answer is the answer and exactly how we got there. So you can see step one of two for this problem is um, we need to do write the general antiderivative of this. So if your student knows the answer, they can submit their answer here, type it in the box, and that's fantastic. If not, that's okay too. They can click display the step answer, see what it is, and then click next. And now they're on step two of two. And it will continue to walk them through until they've gotten through every step of solving the problem and have landed at the answer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then within the tutor mode, we also have learn built back in. <clears throat> which is that um, instructional content that you saw briefly in step one. So this might seem like a small thing, but it's very popular with students because if they want to go back and review the content, they don't have to exit out of their homework and pull it back up to do so. It's just seamless. And then lastly, we can also always view the solution. Um, but again, keeping with the Hawks mentality that it's the explanation of why and how to get there that's so important, we are going to show them exactly how we got there. So this is is just step-by-step step con condensed um, into a quick format, but step-by-step step is really interactive and will take your student through each step of solving the problem and involve them in that process. But if we go back to practice, we can look at a couple others. Um, I will note after your student has pulled up the tutor and viewed the solution or done the step-by-step, step, they can no longer come back and answer this question. They'll click try similar and receive a similar question. And just for your knowledge as well, we do have 50 plus different iterations for our math problems. So not that they would, but if your student wanted to, they could try similar essentially all day long and not receive the same numbers twice. So lots of practice opportunities. But Let's use our skip button here and move on to something that looks a little bit different. I'll just click a couple to show you some of the different question types, and then we can look at a few more of the step-by-step -step instructions. But if we click tutor for this one, this is another, uh, this one actually looks pretty similar. It's another two-step question. Again, um, if your student knows the answer, they can put it in the box. If not, display it. Um, and then move on to the next. So that one was a little bit similar, but let's go back to practice and continue to skip. Here's one that's um, a word problem. So that's a little bit different. Sometimes, um, as we know, word problems can kind of scare students, really trip them up. This is likely where they'll really um, be appreciative of the tutor feature as well. And this is a five step question. So you can see right now we're on step one of five. The first thing we need to do is use the problem statement to determine the initial conditions for the given problem. So again, if we display step answers here, we can see um, how we are supposed to get started, what that first answer is. Click next. Now we're on step two. Um, display the step answer here. And I'll just click through all the steps so you can really get a good idea of exactly how we break this down and explain what we're doing at every step. So that's another key um, thing to mention. We're not just telling them, all right, step four, do this, 
and here is the box to submit your answer, but we're explaining why we need to go through these steps and how it's connecting. So display the step answer here, go on, and now we're on step five of five. So again, it's going to take your student through the entire problem and give them that support um, that we designed to be like the support that you would give your students yourself if you could sit down with each of them while they're going through their homework and work through each step, which we know obviously is not feasible, but our tutor feature, our explained error feedback is meant to mimic the type of feedback that you would give them yourselves. So um, very specific and very individualized for the problem. And then I will also just show the solution. So again, um, everything that we worked through in step by step and everything that we did, but just on one page, um, rather than the interactive format as well. And one thing that I have to mention about Hawks that sets us apart as well is the fact that within our tutor mode, within our explain error feedback, you'll notice that we are giving them step by step instructions, the solution, the feedback on the specific problem your student received. So a lot of systems um, will offer some sort of help, but oftentimes it will show them the solution or step by step for a similar problem rather than the one that they're working on. And what we find is when that happens, students are often just um, kind of doing the plug and chug method and saying, okay, well, in my problem, the 35 was a 33 and the three was a six. And they're just trying to kind of sub numbers um, out rather than if we just give them the step by step and the solution and the feedback for their specific problem, it allows them to really focus on what they did and how to get to one from one step to the other and look at the problem as a whole, rather than just trying to switch numbers. Um, so again, really trying to encourage mastery and actual learning rather than just um, getting the answer for the sake of getting the answer. But at any point during tutor, your students can go back to practice. They can continue trying similar questions. Um, again, 50 plus iterations, so they can try similar as much as they need to until they feel good about the question type, um, or if they've already got a question type down, skip and move on to something else that they do need some more work on. One other thing I'll just mention since we're here in practice is the send to instructor button. This is an optional feature. By default, it is turned off. Off, but if you opt into it, it will link with whatever email address you choose. So if your student is having a problem um, getting an answer, they could click send to instructor and the software would take a screenshot of the question that they're currently working on and put it in an email draft to you. So at that point, they could say, hi, professor, I'm stuck on question six. Here's what I'm seeing. Can you help? Rather than trying to type out all this math in an email. So just a little convenience feature for you and students there. But that is um, that type of feedback that they will get, the step-by-step -step instruction. This was just for one particular lesson on antiderivatives, but whether your student is in a calculus class, a statistics class, a developmental math class, they will always work through um, the lessons in this way with the instructional content being in learn, lots of practice opportunities and step-by-step -step feedback and instructions here in the practice mode. And then certify is where they will actually um, receive their homework grade. And just to briefly show you, since we've got some time, certify is going to look and act almost exactly like the practice mode. The only difference really is that we have removed those learning tools from the bottom of the screen. So the step-by-step -step feature, all of the great feedback within the tutor, we want and we encourage your students to use that as much as they need to within the practice mode. And then once they get here to certify, aka homework, we expect them to be able to work through the question types on their own without that help. Um, and it really builds confidence here in homework because often what happens is your students don't even realize how reliant they are on learning aids until they get to the test or the quiz. They're not there and they go, oh gosh, I can't actually solve this by myself. I didn't realize how much I was relying on the help. So by removing it here, um, 
It is not a shock once they get to the test or to the quiz. And then we also make certify mastery based, meaning that um, by default, we will set a mastery level at about 80%. That is customizable, so you could raise it or lower it. But we find that if your students get 80% of the homework correct, that's a fairly good indicator that they have actually mastered the content. So with 15 questions as the default in this particular lesson and an 80% mastery level, your students can then look in this red heart, which is meant to be like their lives left in a game, see that they can get three questions wrong and still receive a 100 for mastering this homework assignment. Um, because they're just proving that they've mastered the concept of the lesson as a whole, rather than having to prove that they are perfect and can get every single question correct. Um, so it's a lesson level mastery rather than specific question level mastery. But say that your student misses a fourth question in this instance or dips below the mastery level that you've set for them. It's not just a bad grade. That's where we bring in our adaptive remediation. The software would take them out of certify and put them back into practice mode where we just spent our time and your students would then receive a custom question set based on what they got wrong and certify. So it's really tailored to each individual student and what they specifically need to work on, which we only think makes sense because every student in your classroom is likely going to struggle with something a little bit different than the student sitting beside them, and they're all going to learn at their own pace. Um, so this approach allows them to do that. And then keep in mind, once they're back in practice mode, they have the learning tools again. So that tutor feature will be available for them. It will then show them how to work out those problems step by step in that interactive format. Um, um, they can also review the textbook content, they can see the solution worked out if they need to, and then of course, as you saw, if they make a mistake, they will get that very specific feedback, um, letting them know what they've done. So just really customizing the learning path for each individual student and targeting their specific needs. But with that, I will stop sharing or switch my share back to our presentation. And we've got a couple of minutes, so I am happy to take any questions. Um, but I really appreciate the opportunity to present and thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much, Kate, for um, sharing that information. If anybody does have any questions, please feel free to um, enter those in the chat and we can address them. Um, otherwise, I included the link to the um, form again, just if you wanted to fill that out, we will be giving away um, three $25 Amazon gift cards and we will be emailing you um, those prizes. We'll reach out to each winner um, with the prizes following the conference. The next session will begin at 1225. Um, I will go ahead and include the meeting room links for the next session, or you can access the conference website for a complete list of sessions and their descriptions. While accessing the conference website, don't forget to swing by the virtual booth to say hello to the Hawks team. Here you can uh, view a quick five minute demonstration and also be entered to win a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card. Um, thank you so much for your time and we will see you at the next session.